Amen. Matthew chapter 3. I'm, I'm going to cover the subject as quickly as I can. And I'll put a couple of thoughts on the board to help us distinguish what is actually being taught. We've heard the phrases, have you been baptized by the Holy Ghost? You'll never find that in the Scriptures. That's right. Never. That's right. Matter of fact, uh, you can look up the word baptize in any form and put Holy Ghost with it. And every time it's with the Holy Ghost. Notice I have it underlined here. With the Holy Ghost. The only time of is used is in Matthew 28 where he says, in the name of the, f baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. That is water baptism. That is not what we're talking about now. Okay, so every time that we hear about the baptism, quote, of the Holy Ghost, it is actually the baptism with the Holy Ghost. That'll help us make more sense, all right? So let's jump into it here. Uh, Matthew 3, beginning in verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Yep. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So let's look in this uh, context here. We basically see two baptisms, don't we? Um, so who, first of all, there was water baptism and a baptism with the Holy Ghost. So the question is, who does the baptizing? First, uh, the water baptism was done by the Baptist, John. I baptize you with water. It's the same as our uh, baptism today. You never see the apostles get rebaptized. Amen. Uh, even right. though dispensationalists try to make it sound like they do sometimes, but they didn't. Uh, it's a local church ordinance, baptism is. It's not a Christian ordinance. There's really no such thing. Anytime you use the word Christian as an adjective, you're out of bounds. It is a noun. Amen. It's performed by the pastor of a church today, just like it was by John the Baptist back then, and it is a choice. Everyone has a choice to be baptized. Amen? Right. But then there's a baptism with the Holy Ghost. Well, who did the baptizing there? Jesus. See, I have nothing to do with that. I have water baptism. Jesus does Holy Ghost baptism. Uh, I want to make it clear that the Holy Ghost has never been seen in Scripture to baptize someone. Now that flies in the face of the Schofield Bible and other dispensationalists and universalists that would say that uh, somehow when you repent, you are regenerate and the Holy Ghost uh, mysteriously baptizes you into this universal um, mystical body of Christ. I want you to know you cannot find a scripture where you are ever baptized by the Holy Ghost. And the baptism with the Holy Ghost is simply this. It is a church anointing. Now, now get this. Baptism, water baptism is, is individual. Amen. You, you're baptized with water by the pastor. Holy Ghost baptism is a group. It's a church. See the big difference? And baptized by Jesus <laughs> for the Great Commission. 
performed by Christ Himself. And by the way, it is a choice, which we will find out here in a minute. Neither one is equal to salvation. Think about something. If I take a cup and I put water in it, that's the day I got saved. The Holy Ghost came in as an individual. But then when I was baptized into the church, the Bible says that I was baptized also with the Holy Ghost, which we'll talk about in a second. It's a group thing. And that's the difference. I already had the Spirit in me, but now I'm plunged and the Spirit is all around me. There's a difference, isn't there? Without the local church, you can't have that plunging. Without salvation, you can't have that possession of the Holy Spirit in you. Am I making sense? So, anyway, we receive the Holy Spirit within us at regeneration. Individual believers. Okay? Uh, Water baptism equals individual. Holy Ghost, now just put HG, equals group. I think that's about the easiest way to define it. It makes sense. Anyway, in John 3, in verse 3, Jesus told Nicodemus, He said, you must be born again. And you have to be born of the Spirit, water and the Spirit to enter into the kingdom of God. Well, what is the kingdom of God, class? The church. Amen. So uh, you must be born of the Spirit. Amen. There it was the day I got saved. And then born of water to enter the kingdom of God. Uh, People give a testimony. They've been born again, regenerate by the Spirit of God. After 90 days, if we see the fruits of salvation, at least we believe, we will then baptize them and they enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. That's why the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Church is not something that you can just put off on the side. It is the thing for a Christian. Now what's interesting is on the day of Jesus' resurrection, and we may talk about this a little bit more later, but I have a feeling if I spend too much time on it, it will bog us down. Jesus uh, says to them in John 20 and verse 22 that He blew on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Now it can't not mean, it cannot mean that they got saved or got regenerate that day because then they thereby would have had to been baptized again. They never were baptized again. Boy, you'll hear all the the people say, well, that's the day that that the Holy Ghost made people regenerate. I got news for you. That's not true. Right. All right. This was toward the group. He blew on them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Anyway, Romans 8 9 says, Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That's an individual. If you don't have the Spirit of God, amen, which led you to the water, as an individual, you are not saved. Yep. Romans 8 15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. In Galatians 6, God hath sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Now let me tell you, this even happened in the Old Testament. You say, really? Well, in Galatians 3, 8, which we'll be getting to probably this Wednesday night, it says, And the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So, the Bible says that Abraham received the gospel. Now, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, I declare unto you the gospel. And he told us that it is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Abraham received the same gospel. You say, yeah, but they didn't have the Spirit of God till resurrection. Well, I disagree because I'm going to read to you 1 Peter 1, verses 10 and 11. It says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit, capital S, searching uh, what manner of time the Spirit of Christ 
which was in them yep. did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Yep. Amen. Amen. Now we can see easily in the Old Testament that the Spirit of God came on people um, and was with people just like we see in the church today. But I want to submit to you that every person that heard the gospel and repented in the Old Testament was regenerate just as much as in the New Testament. Yeah. God's never changed. Salvation is the Lord. Behold, I am the Lord. I change not. You know, these dispensationalists try to make salvation in a different way. Yeah, sure. uh, that's impossible if you know the character of God. It's never been through works. It's never been by, by being circumcised. It's never been by being a family member. Paul makes it very clear, or I'm sorry, John makes it very clear. You know, you say you're the children of Abraham. Let me tell you, God can make these rocks children of Abraham. Yeah. Amen? So anyway, you kind of follow me. Individual believers get the Holy Ghost. It's individual. And where should that lead you to? Water baptism. Amen. That's the only direction for a believer. Now, all the apostles repented of sin and were baptized by John the Baptist. So what that means is, is when he baptized them, and, and there's no indicator they got saved later. There's, the only one that was lost was Judas. Uh, there's no indicator they got baptized again. They had to do the same thing. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's right. So they repented and were baptized. Amen. Amen. When they repented... The Spirit of God was in them as individuals. Am I making sense? That's good. All right. When Jesus came to be baptized, the Spirit of God was already in him as an individual because he is the God. You understand? There was already an individuality and, and, uh, and a relationship with God. Okay. However, <laughs> let, let me move on here. As a group, uh, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. And this may be confusing, but let me tell you something. As a group, they had the Spirit of God with them before the day of Pentecost. You say, how's that? Because they had Christ. He made it clear. He says, uh, but you know Him, for He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. Um, anyway, Christ was with them. And He made it clear. He says, I know you don't want me to go away, but I need to so the Spirit can come in and not only be with you, but be in you as a group. Yeah. That's the only way we could obey the Great Commission and God's temple be on every church that was planted. Who would want to go plant another church if Jesus was not there? Right. right? So He resurrected, and then we had the coming of the Holy Ghost onto His church, which is the baptism with the Holy Ghost. So anyway, when did the early church receive the baptism with the Holy Ghost? That was on the day of Pentecost. Right. Amen? Amen. Now we're not talking about individual believers. As individuals, they had all repented and the Spirit of God lived in them. Yep. Same has always been true. Uh, <clears throat> but now, as Christ's church, He has anointed His church as a body, as a group. And He warned them of it, or, or uh, should I not really warn them, but told them of it beforehand. In Luke 24, 49, he said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. You know what the word endued means? Baptized. It means to be sunk into something. Amen? Uh, so they had not been endued yet. As long as the Lord was with them, they had not been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Remember, as individuals, they were saved. The Spirit of God gave them regeneration. You can't even enter. You can't even see the kingdom of God unless you've been born again. Once you've been born again, John 3, then you, or John 3, 3, then you can go to John 3, 5 and be born of the water and the Spirit and enter the kingdom. 
Okay, two different things. As an individual, they were already saved. And then on the day of Pentecost, the group was totally immersed in the Holy Ghost. I tell you the same thing today, that we as a church have the same exact doctrine as they did on the day of Pentecost. The same power, the same anointing, the same authority. And it's very important for us to follow the Bible uh, closely or we could lose said anointing and said authority. Anyway, Acts 1.5, Jesus says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Acts 1.8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, overwhelmed you, baptized you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. In Acts 2, verses 16 and 17, Peter preaching said, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Now everybody wants to say that that's the end times. No, he said, this is it. Yeah. Not will be. This is it. And when he says all flesh, he means Gentiles and Jews alike. Amen. That's, that's what he means. Men, women, everybody. Amen. I'll pour it out on all flesh. Anyway, we follow the same pattern in our church today. Amen. We preach the Word of God in hopes that the Spirit of God will indict and reprove the hearts of men, causing them to repent and come to Christ by faith and be regenerate. In other words, the Spirit of God has changed them. New desires, new likes, new, new affiliations, new clothes. Everything just becomes new from the inside out with a, without a bunch of uh, standards and lessons and things like that, man. God just changes them. But then when He brings them to the baptismal waters and they are baptized into the body, God's Spirit also anoints them into that body. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We follow this same pattern through water baptism. I have no control over this. I cannot say if the Holy Ghost is going to fill us or not. But I can obey this. Yes. Amen. In Acts 5.32, let's see if I got that written down here somewhere. Yeah, and we are His witnesses these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey Him. Amen. Amen. You see it? So this is our focus right here. And we, we receive two things out of this. Number one, authority. The baptism with the Holy Ghost was only on one church. Now think about it for a second. We don't have Pentecost every time a new church is birthed. We had one Pentecost. And they were baptized with uh, the Spirit and fire. Remember clo cloven tongues of fire on them, just like the Bible said? Anyway, Acts 2.38, Then Peter said unto them, Well, let me back up. They said, What, sh what must we do? <laughs> We're hearing this preaching and we're in trouble with God. What must we do? Now, when those Jews are watching this, what do you think they're seeing here? They're seeing the cloven tongues of fire. Mm -hmm. They're seeing the preaching with power. They're seeing the authority of what's being said. And it came from Christ's church. And they go, what must we do? We are in violation. Amen? And he said, repent and be baptized. Boy, the Church of Christ loves this one, but boy, if they just knew a little bit about the Bible, get born again, they'd know that this is silly. Yeah. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now watch this. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yep. The gift of the Holy Ghost, referring to what they were seeing on that church that had about 120 in it. So there's authority there. 1 Peter 3.21 says, The like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. 
you cannot convince me that a person that, that's not baptized has a good conscience toward God. There is struggle going on. Anyway, um, I want you to notice here in chapter 3, let's go to the end and go to verse 16. And he says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, now watch this, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now look at the next chapter and verse. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Nowhere do we have any documentation that Jesus was ever led of the Spirit prior to this moment. Yes. He didn't preach a sermon. He didn't do a miracle. He didn't teach anyone until He was anointed from on high to do such. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, you can say, what? You're saying He didn't have the Holy Spirit? Sure He did. He's, he's the, the triune God. Yeah. Amen? Just like when I got saved, the Holy Spirit came in and made me a new creature. And caused me to respond to the truth of the Word of God. But when I was baptized into the church, and you folks know we went through this in 2011, you know how convicted I was about baptism. I mean, I took a chance on losing my ministry and everything uh, to, to go get baptized. But I knew I was lacking something. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Elijah called me four years ago because he knew he was lacking something. Amen. Uh, the folks in Latvia, they called us because they were lacking something. You know what they were lacking? The uh, authority of the church yes. that only comes by the baptism with the Holy Ghost. Now, so there's two things we have to have or, or that, that you see with the baptism with the Holy Ghost. Number one is authority. So how do I get this authority? Well, be baptized into a local church. And now you're in Christ church. When you're a new convert and you get baptized, you are placed into the body. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit, for the body is not one member, but many. In Acts 2.41, the Bible says, Then they that gladly received His word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Good. So how did they get added to them? Yeah. How did 3,000 souls, by the way, 5,000 that afternoon, it was 8,000 saved on Pentecost. Right. People always say 3,000, it was 8,000, I hate to tell you. Isn't that interesting? The new beginning of creation, there was eight. But when Jesus came, it's 8,000. Amen. When His church was formed. Anyway, they were added to them. So they are given this one body. There, there's the church of Jesus Christ. And it is given authority to perform the ordinances and the Great Commission. Nothing else can do that. Not, not any kind of a clearinghouse, not a mission board. Not a convention, not a denomination, not, not a harlot, uh, the great whore or her harlot daughters. And what I'm trying to tell you, that's Catholic or any Protestant in any fashion, including the Southern Baptists. They do not have the authority because they have not been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Right. <laughs> Amen. They don't have the authority. When we stand out and preach... One of the first things we always say is the kingdom of heaven is come to you and repent for it is at hand. Yep. Amen. We say that with all authority, just like John the Baptist did. In Matthew 16, 19, Jesus told Peter, he said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You know, he did say that to Peter. Peter wasn't the first pope and all that. I think I'm going to bring a lesson on that because Peter was the one that made all the decisions. So anyway, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Only one institution has ever had that power. The church of Jesus Christ, the one that was baptized with the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. Made up of, of believers that are saved, Holy Spirit in them. Amen. They get water baptized and, and, and the Spirit of God, or I'm sorry, Christ with His Spirit places them into the local body. Amen. Where there's power. Matthew 18, 18, same thing. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now I really love this one. This is my favorite one. Luke 22, 29, And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. Week after, weekend after next, we're going to do that, by the way. We're going to have the Lord's table weekend after next. And sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. I can't really get into that. Everybody thinks that's future. Can I submit to you there's no such thing as a scripture that says the church will judge the tribes of Israel? There's not one scripture, it's just this. Well, they were already judging the tribes of Israel when they set up over and, and said, you can come into the kingdom and you can't. <laughs> they were already judging them. Amen. So there's a New Testament pre precedence here. We have an authority to perform the ordinances and the Great Commission. Do, do me a favor. Keep your hand right here and let's go over to the book of Acts. And I want you to go to Acts chapter 8. I'm going to read these quickly. I, I can't get into too much. Um, but Acts chapter 8, I just want to show you the precedence. Okay? Um, when, when Christ left His church for heaven, he, His Spirit came in them. They were submerged, immersed by the power of the Holy Ghost of God. And I want you to see what happened in Acts chapter 8. Do y'all remember that in John 4, Jesus sat on a well? Do you remember where He sat on that well? Where was He at? The woman at the well, where was she from? Samaria. Samaria. Remember, they're like, whoa, we went through Samaria. And what's He doing talking to this woman and all this stuff going on, right? Well, she got saved. You remember that? Yep. Well, He didn't leave her alone. Because now... Uh, we're in Samaria. Go to uh, Acts 8 and look at verse 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Now see, Philip was over there preaching and baptizing them. Yeah. Okay? But they weren't a church yet. They did not have the baptism with the Holy Ghost yet. Right. They had water baptism as individuals that were saved. Now watch this, when Peter and John got there in verse 15, who when they were come down prayed for them, look at this, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. In other words, you don't lay hands suddenly on no man. You go in there thinking, okay, is everything right? God, show us. Show us in our heart. Show us in the Scriptures. Are we doing the right thing? And then in verse 16, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now watch this. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Do you know what happened in that church in Samaria? Bang! They've got authority, and now they can perform the ordinances, and now they can perform the Great Commission. Uninhibited. Yep. With Christ as its head. He did that through the laying on of hands. Boy, that's important stuff, isn't it? Amen. That's why we teach this stuff, because of its importance. And it's the basics. It's all the milk of the Word. Everything I'm giving you right now is still milk of the Word. Amen? How about this? Uh, still keeping your hand in Matthew, go to Acts chapter 19. I want to show you what happened with the Gentiles here, or at least one Gentile church. I'll show you where, where it all started here in a second. But look at this. Acts chapter 19, beginning of verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Now, what do we know about these people so far? They're yeah, they're disciples. He says, they're, you know, they're saved. That's what we have to assume. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Now, immediately, some Protestant wants to go, Well, you know, now that you believe in Jesus, have you received the Holy Ghost? And they try to turn this into... Uh, you're not really a believer. Okay? Let's see if that pans out as we read it. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? Do you see how he's joined water baptism 
to the authority of the Holy Ghost. You see how he tied that together in that verse? Yeah. Un, okay, so then unto what then were you baptized? And, uh, and they said, unto John's baptism. In other words, well, like John, you know, we were uh, dunked under the water. Well, John couldn't have done it because John had already been dead 25 years by then. Could have been a disciple of John, but what's funny is we don't see where they had authority. So who knows? You know, just somebody out there going, well, we're saved now. We need to get baptized. So they baptize each other or whatever they do. We, well, let's do it like John's. Not if you don't have authority, you don't. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. In other words, His authority. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them after their baptism, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Amen. Do you see they became a church? The church at Ephesus was born through their water baptism and ordination. Now, again, let's go back in Acts chapter 10. Let's look at Cornelius just a little bit. This one, when we read about Cornelius, it seems, um, it seems to be a little bit out of order, okay? But let's read this. Let's, let's just go to uh, ver verse 44. It says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. People want to get all confused about this. Say, look, they received the gift of the Holy Ghost just like they did on Pentecost. Well, I want you to think about something. Think about the day you heard preaching and the Holy Ghost fell on you. That's what's going on here. Amen. <clears throat> and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. And as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And then answered Peter, Can a man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So that seems to be a little bit out of order, but let me look at it this way. They were saved, they were baptized, and a church was formed. Yep. Amen. Two things here. Peter's preaching was anointed with the Spirit. Amen. And the second thing, they were led to repentance by that Spirit the same way that the Jews were at Pentecost. See, salvation's always the same. Amen? Amen. So I'm just going to say this right off. If we're going to talk about water baptism for individuals, the only authority on God's planet today is a true, old-fashioned, old-line, doctrinal, authoritative Baptist church. Nothing else has can, can even come close to claiming that. If they came out of the great whore, they're not the church. Amen? Amen. Anyway, now let me move on to one other word, back to Matthew 3, and then we'll close. The next word is anointing. This water baptism conducted by the kingdom of heaven places an individual into a group. That group is the temple of God or Holy Ghost baptized. Amen. That's why it's called the temple of God. All right. Not only is that authority, you know, if we stopped at authority, they said, we're in the right church and y'all ain't. I don't think that's the spirit we're supposed to have. Amen. But there's an anointing as well. And I'm not going to take the time to read it. We, we've gone a little long this morning, but please, at, at your leisure, please read 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 13. And you will see, verse 13 says, we're baptized by one spirit into one body. But when you look at 1 through 13, you find he's talking about spiritual gifts. Yes. You cannot have spiritual gifts outside 
of the church of Jesus Christ. You cannot. You won't find any group that got spiritual gifts. Well, there's fruits of the Spirit. Yes, that's Galatian. That's individuals that get saved. That we should have those fruits. But when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit that you see in 1 Corinthians 12 and in Romans 12, that is all corporately on His church. Matter of fact, you'll find, and I won't read it again, but in Matthew 3, 15 through 17, you'll find that the Lord Jesus was anointed that day. Let me give you a verse. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Well, when did that happen? At His baptism. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with Him. We have no such record of that before Christ's baptism. He was anointed at His baptism. And through the church of Jesus Christ, we have authority and the anointing to offer spiritual sacrifices to God. Ecumenical spirit is not offering spiritual sacrifices to God. That's right. Cain's offering was not acceptable to God. It has to be the way God said it, why God said it, and where God said it. Amen. You couldn't just offer someplace else. You had to come to the tabernacle or the temple. Right. Amen. It's where we have the Great Commission. It's where we have ordination. It's where we have the ordinances. And it's where we have sp spiritual gifts. And I'm going to tell you right now, and I say without apology, I don't say this because I'm a Baptist. I'm a Baptist because it's true. And that is the only place that you're ever going to get that's going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost is a local, separate, individual, autonomous Baptist church that has been duly ordained. Amen. That's the only place you're going to find it. Now, let me ask you. Did we make baptism with the Holy Ghost a little clearer? It's good. You see, baptism with water, that's individuals. But baptism of the Holy Ghost is the church. Amen? Amen. All right, let's stop right there. I, I fit that in in 37 minutes. Praise the Lord. Amen.